Starfield has a lot of weapons. Pistols, SMGs, rifles, shotguns, lasers, the worst unarmed combat in a Bethesda game, 9 non-upgradable melee weapons, and non-lethal weapons in a game where a pacifist run is impossible. All these weapons share one thing in common, you can use them more than one time before they lose all will to live. But there's one type of weapon that doesn't follow this rule, throwables, specifically grenades and mines. Since best guests already beat Starfield with only mines and while not wearing a spacesuit, I've decided to build my character around the second type of portable explosive. Can you beat Starfield with only grenades? You can probably guess the rules. Only use grenades to damage enemies, no companions unless required for the main quest, and the entire run is on normal difficulty. That's pretty much it, so with all that said, let's begin. We start the game on our first day of a menial, tedious job, which honestly hits a bit too real for my tastes. After doing about 10 seconds of actual work, head into a cavern and touch an Elder Scroll, which by all rights should leave me blind or insane, but instead just shows me some pretty colors and knocks me out cold. I try to make my character look as much like a stick of dynamite as possible, pick the combat medic background for more health, healing, and to get a combat skill so I can unlock demolitions earlier, and pick introvert, raised enlightened, and terra firma as my traits. Introvert because I can't use companions, terra firma for even more oxygen when combined with introvert, and raised enlightened because I want to see if the house of the enlightened chest was any good. I then name myself Dinah Mike before stepping out into the harsh vacuum of space and facing off against the Scarlet Armada. And by facing off, I mean standing back, catching bullets with my face, getting unreasonably peeved by this inaccessible first aid container, and watching as everyone makes mincemeat of each other. To be fair, I did pitch in somewhat when I held a gas cylinder in front of a suicidal pirate and granted him his wish, which doesn't count as a kill in the menu. It's like dealing with Jared all over again. After a nice nap and snack break, I run into a roadblock. Space combat. As cool as it would be, you can't get a grenade launcher for your ship, and this section is unskippable. I'm just gonna treat this like the Rad Roach in Fallout 3 or shouting at the Greybeards. Since the game forces me to do it, I'll just bite the bullet and turn a few ships into debris. These attacks will become commonplace unless I deal with the Ringmaster, however, so I head to Crete. I only find a few grenades here and there, so I mostly just let Vasco deal with the brigands instead. In the end, I decide to just run past them, and then rudely interrupt Brogan's speech with an explosive surprise. You gotta be kidding. Two grenades aren't enough to take him down, so I use a mix of Vasco and the trick I used earlier for a guilt-free kill. Running away from the remaining pirates back to my ship, I let the bullets nestled inside my organs take a deep long sleep, level up from discovering Jemison, land, and combine the Blood, Dragon, and Sun Scroll to defeat Lord Archon and stop the Tyranny of the Sun. I mean, to watch a couple rocks float around aimlessly. Leveling up, I get Ballistics and Lasers, simply because I need a few more combat skills before I unlock Demolitions. Ballistics also might increase the physical damage of grenades, although that's just wishful thinking. I then stroll on over to Reliant for some Stimpaks, to Walla for information, and the Distribution Center for a measly two grenades. This'll be a running theme. Oh yeah, and I also get a spiffy new outfit. To be fair, the well does have four impact grenades I can steal, but they aren't going to last me very long. On the Red Planet, I use Sarah and my impeccable persuasion skills to find our next location, Venus. Sneaking past some Mirac cultists, and by sneak I mean fly in a straight line, I then find out the guy we're looking for was at Nova Galactic Staryard, which I give a bit too aggressive of a hug. In the station itself, I'd like to save up my limited grenades, so I let Sarah distract the ecliptics while I make a mad dash towards my objective. One shipwreck and ecliptic salsa recipe later, I nab another artifact and head back to the lodge, getting shotgun certification so I can unlock the first ranks of demolition, adding a throwing arc and increasing the radius of my grenades by 25%. My next mission takes me to Edgewater, where I find out that Jacob Coe's house is locked until you resolve the hostage situation. The first speech check goes well enough through sheer luck alone, while the second one doesn't go as swimmingly. Thankfully, the game allows you to exit dialogue at any point in quick save, so I do just that and convince the bank robbers in one fell swoop. Now that we can get into Jacob's house, I simply let Sam distract him while I nab the maps and make my way over to the empty nest. One grenade takes care of the bandits already inside, while three more take care of the ones who followed me in. I then toss two more for good measure, snatch the artifact, and test out my new impact grenades on Shaw herself. Think fast, chuckle nuts. 
Bringing back the artifact and dismissing Sam, I treat myself to a much spiffier outfit, break into my non-existent parents' home, sell my crap for a few more grenades, and head to Neon to help with an arrest the only way I know how. In Good Neighbor, only two vendors sell grenades, which is disappointing, but I'll take what I can get. Time to go back to Vectera, where I learn the fates of Heller and Barrett, find Heller, find Barrett, and rescue Barrett by throwing a grenade in the same room as him. Somehow, he avoids becoming Constellation Pate, so we both make a break for the ship and head back to the Lodge to show him our rock collection. Next up, I head out with Andresia to an abandoned mine where I grenade some fools, get rank 2 of Demolitions, increasing my damage by 25%, grenade some more fools, and put Heller's Cutter to good use. Last but not least, I go to Sumati, dodge some crabs, and get sent to the eye. Vlad says something about scanning for strange readings, but I can literally see a giant ominous temple in the distance, so what's the point? At the time wound, I learn the Dragon Ren shout from the heroes of old, showcase it in front of my magic immune friends, level up, and coat my tongue in silver. Which may be useful for my next mission, as it involves my favorite pastime of corporate subterfuge. But first, I decide to get rid of some cursed kicks from my good pal Bianchi. I thought having the boots on my inventory would cause random events or debuffs or something interesting, but no dice. Just ignore someone trying to buy them, place them in a container right next to the guy who wants them, and report back for some easy money. At the Astral Lounge, I set off some fireworks, which nobody seems to appreciate, and then look for our buyer. Hmm, who could it be? Surely not the shady guy leaning against a wall with a huge briefcase. I then grab the artifact, threaten both him and one of Slayton's thugs with security, and... Oh, our ship's been impounded. Okay, time for a talk with the man himself. An interesting thing to note, one of his security guards shows up as an enemy in the HUD, but isn't hostile. Persuading the front desk attendant with an unfortunate name is easy enough, and I vent through the building until I reach the exit. Now, I could just blast all of Slayton's goons to Stardust, or... Booping Slayton on the nose crashes the game, so I try to be a bit more reasonable next time. And by reasonable, I mean murderous. Throwing a grenade at Musgrove almost kills him from the projectile itself, with the blast finishing him off. With another artifact done and dusted, I head into space where I get stopped by the Starborn, who demand I hand it over. So I do. There are no consequences to this, and you can't even bring it up in dialogue later, so it was kind of a waste. Oh well. What matters now is finding more of the things, which I immediately head over to Orea to do. While the cryo lab is large and easy to get lost in, it's not so bad as I can use AMP to run past most of the enemies. Key words, most of. At this stage of the game, a Starborn appears every time you collect an artifact, so I put my grenade collection to use and blow him back to his component molecules. On Indum 3D, I marvel at the Crimson Fleet's floating box technology, run through their base, fight another Starborn, and collect yet another artifact. Back at the eye, I help Sam Co with welding a panel by just clicking on it. No skill check, no minigame, no nothing. Which somehow counts as a quest, right. On the bright side, it levels me up, allowing me to get vats for my ship. When it comes to the scow, I talk my way on board and slip a grenade under Petrov's couch, murdering several bystanders in the process. Taking the artifact gives me 500 bounty with the United Colonies. However, as long as you don't talk to any of the guards, you'll be fine. As it turns out, there's disaster at Constellation, in the form of a Starborn who's been adding unnecessary holes to my friend's bodies. When I get back from checking on the eye, I find out Barrett's been killed. Now, I'm not a detective, but it looks like he was murdered by a puddle of blood. After escaping the wrath of Mr. Edgelord, I now have to figure out where to go based on some vague coordinates found in old religious texts. Thrilling. Landing at Pilgrim's Rest, I already know the answers to his little quiz, and, pro tip, just pick the most pretentious option for each question. Following a rad scorpion and doing a puzzle in the loosest sense of the word tells me to go to the last star of the Scorpius constellation. Oh, and I get the third rank in wellness. Being willingly abducted onto the Starborn ship, which I would have blown out of the sky if they gave me the option, I skip past all their dialogue and level up, increasing commerce. The moon is similarly easy, as all you have to do is jump to the roof and listen to Nick Valentine ramble on for a bit. Finally, we come to the NASA launch tower. 
Since I'd like to save my grenades, I simply run past all the robots so I can get the artifact and get out of dodge, dodging some Starborn on my way back. When it comes to who I side with, since I sided with the Emissary last time, I go with the Hunter for variety's sake. We're approaching the final few missions of the game, and if it feels like I've been going at too fast a pace, that's because most of these missions are really that simple once you've done them a few times. I'm not trying to intentionally rush the run or anything, but I also don't want to spend any more time than I have to grinding out vendors for grenades, so there's not much meat besides going from point A to point B. To underscore that point, the artifact on Neosi is done and dusted before any of the ecliptics can fully react to my presence. Since I don't have enough money to afford a better ship, I convince a person to take a large sum of money, which rewards me with more money for some reason, get rank 2 of commerce, attempt to dispose of a corpse, and now have just enough to afford the Rambler, which has a 22 light year grab jump range. The Titanfall 2 mission is another one where I just save up my grenades and run through it, except for some mandatory kills, so we'll just move past it. Now for the worst part of the run. I know there's a huge fight coming up, so I go to all the vendors I can think of and restock them over and over until I have about 100 frag grenades. I don't even want to say how long this took, just know that it made me want to take shots of Drano. The first stage of the fight is simple since it's just standard ship combat with assistance from the hunter. The second stage also isn't too bad, just keep chucking grenades at the clones until he runs out and keels over. In between stages, I had to go back to the vendors and restock on grenades. The third stage makes you waste more grenades than I was comfortable with on weak ecliptics, but it's also fairly simple. The fourth stage puts you against two Starborn, but since they don't have any tricks besides activating some robots, it's a piece of cake. The fifth stage is even easier since they spawn clones of the player character that use your preferred weapon. Since throwables don't technically count as weapons, I end up with my inner demons attempting to punch me to death. Finally, it's time to face the Emissary, and while I could just talk him down, I still want to see if the fight is possible first. When he makes everything 0G, you have to be careful where you throw your grenades or you might accidentally hit yourself. After that, I use up all my secondary grenade types to deal as much damage as possible, and then hard focus on the Emissary himself, ignoring the clones as I need to make every grenade count. Spamming him with explosives long enough earns me the victory, I throw one last grenade at his rear end as a final middle finger, power up the armillary, meet the most handsome man in existence, and beat Starfield with only grenades. In conclusion, the real problem of this run wasn't doing damage, it was getting enough grenades to deal damage in the first place. Vendors only sold 3 or 5 at max during early levels, while at later levels you could get more varieties of grenades and more at once. Still, having to wait for two days, stock up, and repeat over and over was mind-numbing as all get out, and every time a grenade missed an enemy, I felt part of my will to live slip away. I do not recommend doing this challenge unless you also use mines, as vendors actually sell more of those than grenades for some reason. Or just be a sane person and use a grenade launcher. If you enjoyed this video, consider showing your support by liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. If you didn't enjoy this video, dislike it and leave constructive criticism so I can improve. Suggestions for new videos will be featured at the end, and I might make a new video based on your idea. Also, check out Best Guest's video on beating Starfield with only mines. I put the link in the description. This is Causal Loop, signing off. Peace. Dude, let's go. This place is full of grenades.